I'm going to read from 1 Kings chapter 8, beginning with verse 5. Here's how it reads, and I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. And this is what it says. It says, And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel, who were assembled to him, were with him before the ark, sacrificing so many sheep and oxen that they could not be counted or numbered. Then the priests brought the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place into the inner sanctuary of the house, to the most holy place under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread their wings over the place of the ark. Cherubim are angels, if you're not familiar with that terminology. And it says that the cherubim, the angels, spread their wings over the place of the ark. And the cherubim made a covering over the ark and its poles from above. I want somebody to know today, this isn't part of my message, but I want somebody to know that when you enter into the presence of God, his wings, the wings of his angels cover you. Are you thankful for God's covering over your life? It says that the, the wings of the cherubim covered over the ark and its poles from above. But the poles were so long that the ends of the poles could be seen from the holy place before the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen outside. They are there to this day. There was nothing in the ark except the two tablets of stone which Moses put there at Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with the sons of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. It happened that when the priests came from the holy place, the cloud filled the house of the Lord. That is the cloud, we call it the glory cloud of God's divine presence. And when they had been worshiping and offering sacrifices, the cloud of God's glory filled the house of the Lord. And verse 11 says, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. The presence of God was so thick and so powerful in that place that the priests who had come to worship God and to come to offer their services to God, the Bible says that they could not stand to do their service anymore because the presence of God was so thick and so powerful. That is what I want in my life. And that's what God wants for your life is for the presence of the Lord to come upon you in a way that's so thick and so powerful that you can't even stand in God's presence hardly anymore because his presence is so strong and so powerful. So we're going to talk today about pressing in to the presence of God. Pressing in to the presence of God. Would you join me in prayer one more time? You can put your phones or your Bibles away, and we're going to ask God to speak to us through this portion of the reading and preaching of his word. And we're going to say, God, we hunger for your presence. We want your presence more than anything else. Would you join me in praying? God, we love you. We thank you for this opportunity to hear your word. Let your word minister to each and every one of our hearts, God. And I pray that our number one desire more than anything else would be a hunger for your presence, Lord. That's your desire for us. You want to visit us with your Holy Spirit and with your presence. Let it be done in our life according to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said in Jesus' name. And if you'll give the Lord one more hand clap of praise and appreciation, you may be seated today. We have been speaking the past couple of weeks, both in our Sunday services and in our Wednesday Bible studies, the Lord has put it on my heart to speak on the subject of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want to explain to you what that terminology means when we talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The word baptism just means to be immersed. That's all it means. It's a fancy church word that we use. We talk about being baptized in the water, which is something that the word of the Lord instructs us to partake in that we are to be baptized in water in the name of Jesus. And that word baptized just means to be immersed. That's all it means, it's a very simple word. And there are a number of things, if you will follow my train of thought here this afternoon, there are a number of things in our day and time and in the culture in which we are living that people are choosing to immerse themselves in. Remember that the word baptism means immersion. And so we each have the opportunity to choose what we will immerse 
ourselves in. Many people in our day and age, and we are living in what the Bible calls the last days. What are the last days? The last days means that we are in a period of time when the Lord has communicated his final message to us. The message that he communicated through the Lord Jesus Christ when he offered his life as a sacrifice at Calvary so that whoever wanted to could come to him and receive salvation and receive eternal life. And that is God's final message to this world before the end times come and before one day the Bible says that the curtains of time will close and this age will be wrapped up. We don't know exactly in what fashion it's going to happen. We don't know the details of how it's going to happen, but we know from the word of God that everything in this life is temporary and lasts for just a season in this physical world that we are in today. And one day it is all going to come to an end. But the things that are in the heavenly realm. And each and every one of us has been given a soul and a spirit that is not temporary, even though our physical bodies are temporary. Each and every one of us has a portion of our nature that is eternal, that will outlive our physical bodies, and that will reside in eternity forever because God has designed for us to be that way. So each of us has the ability in this life to choose what are we going to be immersed in? What are we going to be baptized in? And some people choose to be immersed in simply the, the, the culture of our modern society. The Bible talks about that in the last days that people are going to become lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. And some people choose to be immersed in themselves and in beautifying themselves and in being self-absorbed. Other people get caught up in the what's going on in the world around us and the who's who and the latest news and the latest gossip. There are many things in our day and age that people are choosing to immerse themselves in, whether it be a cultural immersion or a political immersion or, or an immersion in their career or in the pursuits of their everyday life. We are making an everyday decision of what we are going to be immersed in. But the Bible promises to each and every one of us who desire it that there is an immersion. There is a baptism that the Bible calls the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What is that? It is a gift that God has promised to all those who seek for it and all those that desire for it that we can choose rather than being immersed in the culture of the world that is around us. We can make the decision that we want to be immersed in the presence of the Most High God. And we want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Jesus made this promise to his disciples and he was telling them about the Holy Spirit and how when he ascended into heaven that he was going to send back his spirit for whoever wants to receive it. He said the Holy Spirit is something that you are all familiar with because Jesus said the Holy Spirit even now is abiding with you. Why did Jesus say that? Because the spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit, is the very spirit of Jesus Christ, the spirit that was in him. So when he was walking the earth with his disciples, the spirit of God was abiding with them because the spirit of God was in Jesus. But Jesus gave them this promise. He said, the Holy Spirit that is abiding with you shall be in you. He's making a promise that is even greater. He says, I'm with you now in the flesh. But when I am ascended into heaven, the spirit that is inside of me, I am going to pour it out upon you. And the spirit that was formerly with you is going to baptize you and immerse you to a greater degree. The spirit of God is going to be in you. This is the promise that Jesus gave to his disciples. And it is a promise that is still there for each and every one of us who open up our heart and desire for God to immerse us. I don't know about you this afternoon, but it's not enough for me just to have a taste of God's presence. It's not just enough for me like if I was standing by the swimming pool, if you will, if God's presence was like a swimming pool. I don't want to be one of those people that just comes by and likes to dip my toe 
toe in the water and to just see what the temperature of the water is. But when it comes to the presence of God and it comes to the spirit of the living God, I want to be immersed in God's presence. I want from head to toe every part of me to be overwhelmed and overcome with the spirit of the living God. And there is a hunger in my heart. Maybe it's because I've experienced enough in this life to know and I've experienced enough hurts and I've experienced enough disappointments to know that everything in this life other than God if I choose to be immersed in it it's going to disappoint me it's going to let me down anything that I set my vision and my focus on other than God is going to lead to disappointment but there's a hunger that is birthed in me because I have experienced those things in my life that says God the only thing in life worth being immersed in is your Holy Spirit. I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit to be in my life. I want to be submerged in your presence. I want to be saturated in your presence until you begin to overwhelm me and overcome me and I become to be transformed in your presence to become more like you. If you're thankful for God's Holy Spirit, would you just take a minute to put your hands together and say, Jesus, thank you for your presence. Thank you, Lord, that you've made it available to us. God didn't have to do it. God didn't have to make a way for us to enter into his presence. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of God's glory. None of us deserve to have the presence of the living God dwell inside of our hearts, but God promised to it, promised it to us as a free gift of his grace. Grace means that we don't deserve to receive God's spirit because of what a good person that we are. Grace means that we have not earned our way into God's presence. I want to tell you this afternoon, if you are making a human effort of your own ability to try to earn the right to be in God's presence. You are on a treadmill going nowhere fast, but you're wearing yourself out. Because none of us have the human willpower enough to earn our way into God's presence. And when you're trying to do it on your own power and when you're trying to just be a good enough person or do enough good deeds or, you know, maybe if I donate enough money to this charity and there's nothing wrong with donating to charity, it's a great, it's a great thing. We are called to good works. But if you are trying to look to doing enough good deeds to earn your way into God's presence, you're never going to get there because you are on a treadmill of your own design and you are serving your own good works and you're serving your own human efforts but it will always fall short of being able to get into God's presence and so what you need in order to get into God's presence and to receive the baptism of his spirit is you need a revelation of God's grace And a revelation of God's grace simply acknowledges and confesses, God, I am not worthy and I will never be worthy to be in your presence. But this gift that you have offered me is something that you did out of your own good will. You gave it to us freely when I was still a sinner, when I was still unworthy, before I even knew who you were. You chose to to give your life for me, and you gave me this gift through grace. And when you understand that getting into God's presence is an act of God's grace, and not something that you deserve because what a good person you are, then the door opens wide to you, and you unlock that entrance into the kingdom of God and into the presence of God, and God just begins to pour out his spirit to you on a greater measure and on a greater degree because you're not doing it on the strength of your own two feet, but you're entering into God's presence through his grace and through his mercy. We're talking this afternoon about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want to remind you this afternoon that the world we are living in is in serious trouble. When I preach to you, I don't preach with a negative mindset, just bashing the world around us and telling you how bad things are in the world around us. Because believe me, if I wanted to preach about how bad things were in the world, I could preach for a very long time about all the problems that are in this world today. And we could sit here for a long time. You don't need for me to read to you a list of all the troubles and all of the 
problems that we are experiencing in this world today. But suffice it for me to tell you today that we are living in the last days. And what this world needs to experience in these last days, the only hope for this world is for the presence of God to be experienced. There's no lecture hall that this world can go to that's going to fix all the problems that are in it. There, 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 there's no human reasoning or philosophy that people can absorb that will fix all of the problems that we have. But there is a place that we can go where we experience life, where we experience healing, where we experience deliverance. And it is in the presence of the Most High God. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's described. Jesus promised it to all those that believe upon him. He said he would send his spirit so that it would fill us, so that it would overcome us, that it would overpower us, and that miracles would take place in our life. It's described in the book of Acts chapter 2, and there are several signs that come with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some of these signs and these evidence that we have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost are things that happen on the outside, and some of them are things that happen on the inside. Three places in the book of Acts is described that when the baptism of the Holy Spirit came upon those who were gathered, whether it be they were gathered for a prayer meeting or they were gathered together for a church service to hear the word of the Lord, the Bible describes the baptism of the Holy Spirit coming upon them. And the word of God says that when the baptism of the Holy Spirit came, they began to speak with other tongues or in other words, in different languages as the spirit of God gave them the ability this is a miraculous occurrence and what is actually happening in this context when the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes upon us. What is actually happening is that we become so enveloped and so immersed in the presence of God that we are no longer praying or praising God simply with our own human abilities. But the Spirit of God that has come upon our hearts and the love of God that is baptizing us, the Spirit of God prays in us and prays through us so that we find on our lips another language, another tongue, words that don't even make sense to our natural mind. But what is happening is that the Spirit of God is praying through us and giving us the words to say. That's the kind of experience that I want to have in God's presence. That's the type of baptism of the Holy Spirit that we read about in the Word of God, where these miraculous occurrences were, to, were, were happening in the believers of the Most High God. And I want to let you know that God still does these miracles today. God still fills us with His Spirit. It's for everybody who hungers and everybody who thirsts for it. Jesus made the invitation. We talked about it earlier. He said, whoever is thirsty, come. Come and let him drink from the rivers of the living water. And he said, I will give you to drink rivers of living water and I will satisfy the thirst of your soul. If we hunger and thirst for God's presence, he will respond by baptizing us with the power of his Holy Spirit. But more than just the outward signs and the miracles that take place through the presence of God that comes through us and prays through us, even greater than that, is what happens to us on the inside when God's Spirit comes upon us and the more time that we learn to spend in God's presence. The greatest miracle is what takes place on the inside where nobody can see. Because what happens is that when the Spirit of God baptizes us, there is a transformation process that takes place in our heart. Whereas before, when we, are, when we are seeking God's presence, we might read even in the word of God these great things about the principles that Jesus taught. And we might read about the great works that Jesus did and, and, and the great character that he showed to the world around him of being a loving person and being a kind person and being a gentle person. We read about Jesus and his character and his nature. We say, that's great. I wish I could be that type of person too. But even though we read about it and even though we want that for ourselves, what we find is that we don't have the power to become that type of person with our own strength and with our own abilities. So what happens is, is that when we spend time in the baptism or in the immersion of God's spirit, what happens is that his Holy Spirit overshadows us and overpowers us. And as we spend time in God's presence, 
what happens is that our heart becomes transformed and we find that we are becoming more like Jesus. Not because we're trying so hard, you know, not because we're, we're putting a to-do list on our wall behind us. Be like Jesus, be loved, be kind, be gentle. You know, and we're looking at that to-do list every day. We set reminders on our phone. Don't forget to be a loving person. Don't forget to be friendly. Don't forget to be gentle. What is that? That's trying in your own human efforts. But there is a better way. And through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, what happens is that God's presence just begins to rub off on you. It's like when you're spending time around a good friend. My dear sister, Elvie, is a good friend. We had dinner on Friday. And I want to share, I want to share a great story with you. Uh, our, our dear friend, she's part of our family. We love her so much. And we had dinner together. And while we were having dinner together, our dear Elvie showed my son, who's got his hands up because he wants to participate now that he knows what I'm talking about. Our dear Elvie showed Noah how to do some what? What was it, Noah? I'll let you tell us. It was a magic trick. Two magic tricks that she showed Noah as we were spending time together. And Noah was so enamored by those magic tricks. And you know what he did, Sister Gloria? The next day we went over to Nana and Papa's house, his, Erica's parents. And you know what Noah did? He remembered those magic tricks that he learned from spending time with Elvie. And he said, hey, Papa, let me show you this magic trick that I just learned. What happened? He spent time with his dear friend, family member, Elvie. And he learned something from being in her presence. And now when he goes somewhere else, what he learned in her presence, he wants to show that to the other people around him so that they can appreciate it too. It's the same way with the presence of God. When we are praying for God to baptize us with the Holy Spirit, what happens is that we are spending time in God's presence and he immerses us with his power. He immerses us with his anointing and we get to experience his love. We, we, we feel his love in our hearts. We see what his character is like, his gentleness, because it's like we're standing before him and we see that he is gentle. We experience his kindness, his goodness. And now when we leave God's presence, just like my son Noah did, when we go experience the community and we go spend time with other people, what we experienced in God's presence rubs off on us and now we begin to show it to the world around us. So there is a transformation that takes place in our heart. Again, not because of our own good works. When we're trying to do it without God, trying to become good people, my analogy is like we're running on a treadmill. We're putting in all this effort. We're getting sweaty. We're, we're doing the best we can, but we aren't going anywhere. But when we get in God's presence and his spirit baptizes us, he takes us places and transforms our heart so that we become like him in every way. I want, I want, to, I want to tell you this today, saints of God, church of God. The best hope that the world around you has of experiencing the presence of God is for you to be in the presence of God and for them to see the presence of God through you. That is the way that God has chosen to make himself known to the world around us. You are God's chosen vessels. You are his witnesses. You are those that God has sent into the world to be his ambassadors to let the world around you know that there is a God in heaven that loves them. It's one thing for, for, for you know, somebody could get on television on the nightly news and, and the, the news anchor, you know, and I don't know what channel this would happen on because most of these two channels are probably too afraid to say something like this. But, you know, on the nightly Los Angeles news, some news anchor could get up and tell all of Los Angeles, they could say, Los Angeles, California, I want you to know that God loves you. And that would be great. I would be very happy if somebody did that. That would make my day. I would say, this is the news channel I'm watching every day from now on. But that's not the method that God chooses to let the world around them know that he loves them. What God chooses is to send you into the world as his ambassador. 
And when you are spending time face to face with somebody, it doesn't matter who it is, doesn't matter where you are. It could be simple as somebody that you meet in the grocery store or you're in the checkout line and you're, you're getting your groceries done at Target. And God just inspires you because you've been spending time in his presence. And now when you're standing before that checkout clerk, suddenly there's a love in your heart. Where did that come from? Why do I love this person that I've never met before? It's the love of God reaching out through you because you've been in his presence and now God is allowing you to experience the love that he has for them. And now you just say, it's good to see you today. How is your day going? And if God so leads you, you might even say, I want you to know that God loves you and he has a plan for your life. What's happening? You've been in God's presence and now God's presence is coming out of you and you are manifesting the spirit of God everywhere that, we, everywhere that you go. That is the method that God has chosen to reveal himself to the world. It's through me and it's through you. This scripture that I'm going to remind you of as we conclude today's services is a scripture that is just sunk inside of my heart and I'm praying to God, this is what I want. This is what I want in my own life. This is what I want when we gather together as a church group. It's this very passage we read earlier in 1 Kings chapter 8. And it talks about Solomon, who was one of the kings of Israel. And he gathered together all of the priests of the Most High God. And in those days, the Holy Spirit was not yet poured out for us to experience like we are in this room. By the way, this is a great building. This is beautiful. We're going to be having church here every Sunday. Now I'm excited about this. You all look so beautiful on these pews. I'm so thankful. It really doesn't matter where we gather. We could gather next week at my house, Sister Gloria's house. The presence of God would still be there because the presence of God is not confined to buildings of stone. God has poured out his spirit to the lives of all who believe. But in these days, the Holy Spirit was not yet poured out. And they were worshiping God in what was called Solomon's temple, where God had for that time chosen to put his name in his presence. <clears throat> and the Bible says that as Solomon and all of his priests were offering up their worship to God in that temple. The Spirit of God began to come down and fill that temple like a glory cloud, like a smoke cloud of God's presence. And the presence of God came into that building so thickly that the Bible says that the priests of God who were serving in the things of God, serving in the temple, the Bible says that they could no longer stand to minister but they begin to sink to their knees and fall on their faces because the presence of God was so thick and so strong in that place as, as God's presence began to fill his temple today you and I are the temple of the living God we are the vessels that God has chosen to pour his spirit out upon us and I've made up in my mind that I want God's presence to be so thick and so strong in my life that just like those priests in Solomon temple they could no longer stand to do the things that they wanted to do but the presence of God to begin to take over I want the presence of God in my life to be so strong and so powerful that it just begins to overwhelm me and overcome me and I begin to be transformed to what God wants for my life and what God desires to do inside of my heart. Would you stand with me this afternoon? We're just gonna pray a very simple prayer, a prayer of dedication, a prayer of consecration. We're going to say, God, I wanna be baptized. I wanna be immersed in your presence. I want your presence to dwell in my heart so thick that it's like a cloud of your glory that goes with me everywhere that I go. I want everywhere that I go for people to see the hand of God at work in my life. 
Lord, I know that there's some people that I encounter on a daily basis. The only way that they are going to experience your presence is because your presence is in my life and your presence is on my life. So church of God, saints of God, this afternoon, let us press into the presence of the living God together. Would you join me for a few moments of prayer in this sanctuary as we unite together in prayer? Let's press into God's presence. Let's say, God, I want to go deeper into your presence. I don't want to just dip my toe in that swimming pool of where you live, but I want to dive into your presence until I am immersed. Would you close your eyes with me? And whatever your manner of prayer is, if you like to bow your head, if you like to raise your hands, would you just make a decision today to enter into God's presence? God, I am choosing to be immersed in your spirit, God. I don't want to be overwhelmed and overcome by the things of this world. This world has nothing for me, God. I even see those that are around me and they are consumed by what is going on in the world around them. They are baptized by what is going on in the world around them, God. But I want to be immersed in your presence, Almighty God. I am choosing a different path for my life than the path of this world. I am choosing to be immersed every day in your Holy Spirit God baptize me overwhelm me overcome me by your presence Lord Jesus let there be a transformation that takes place in my heart as I am consumed by your Holy Spirit send your spirit down right now upon us with every eye that is closed here today and our hearts tuned in towards worship we're going to invite the Holy Spirit to come right now. And I ask that you would just worship God. Just be overcome by his presence as we allow the Holy Spirit to move upon us. Let the Holy Spirit sweep over you like a wave of water. Let, it, let the Spirit of God blow on you like a mighty wind. Holy Spirit, come right now. Let your wind blow on our life right now, Jesus. We invite you into this place, every heart, every mind, every soul. We are tuned in to that place of worship. Holy Spirit, come right now and fill every heart that is in this place.